Scott is the director of the uh, notorious Telluride Mushroom Festival experience. Uh, second year this year? Yes. And uh, the Telluride Mushroom Festival director, Scott Cox, has been in love with the world of fungi since he first picked and ate a wild mushroom. In the 20 years since, he has traveled to various parts of the of the world educating communities about venomous and non-venomous jungle snakes, guiding river trips, donning backies off cliffs. Backies? Yeah, back cliffs. Oh, back <laughs> Climbing trees and putting on workshops about cultivation, remediation, and medicinal use of the fungi. Scott has earned degrees in adventure education and environmental education from Prescott College and enjoys life based in a small village near Toyota and Colorado, Rocky Mountains. This talk will be on the history of the Notorious Telluride Mushroom Festival experience that will include incriminating photos. <laughs> this year's festival will focus on fungi as medicine. Every year they have a different focus uh, in Telluride at their festival. And this year is on med mushroom as medicine. And uh, further ado, Scott Cox. You guys are awesome. Thanks for letting me come out here. I actually don't need the lights off yet. Because um, you can watch that photo until it disappears. I'm going to go through like a little brief history, talk to you a little bit of more about kind of the festival, and then I'll show you some pictures and that might kind of bring some of that stuff together, some of those ideas. But um, can you guys hear me? Can everybody hear me? You can hear me? Yeah. If I do that, you can hear me. <laughs> you have a much better voice. <laughs> so, uh, Usually, I guess I like to start out with just like what got me here. And, um, you know, I was talking to David Aurora one day. I told him, I said, you know, it's because of you that I am so into this thing here. You know, the West Coast kid grows up and the West Coast guy has a book. And then you look at this book, you're given this book, and it's a little overwhelming. I was wandering in the forest, the old growth forest of the Northwest. And I saw this mushroom. I was working for AmeriCorps. I was just a kid out of just just out of college, walking around, and my friend said, oh, I got a book for that, and hands me this book, and it's this massive, thick book, and I've never used a field guide in my life. And I sat down there for a while with this thing, just like thumbing through the pages, going, where do I start? I had no clue, and uh, eventually we figured out that it was Rusula Brubipes, which is, I think, what he said, insipid in that book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I put it into my pasta that night, and my parents didn't even flinch. They ate it. Um, they always thought I was kind of crazy. <laughs> and they don't know that I run a psychedelic mushroom festival. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this festival's got a long history. It started way before me, and I, I really have a difficult time trying to take any responsibility for anything that's happened in the past. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's because of the people before me that really brought the festival to where it's at. So, um, how many of you have heard of the Telluride Mushroom Festival? Yes. All right. We must be in the West. Um, <laughs> how many of you have been to the Telluride Mushroom Festival? All right. So, there's yes. all of you are presenters, right? <laughs> You've all presented there. Um, it's, it's widely known of, but it's not widely attended. I mean, I've got people that come from all over the world to go to this festival, but <laughs> it's, it's a tremendous festival experience to go to, and it's because of that experience that people have had that the word has spread wide and far, and it's really incredible. So back in the 70s, um, there was a scientific conference held in Aspen. And it was a, kind of at one point, it was a joint venture between the Salzman family and the Beth Israel Hospital. And um, eventually, it, by, by basically 1980, it had come to Telluride. And it took on numerous names, but the same people were still involved. So we're talking about, like, I don't know if you guys have heard of Manny Salzman and the Salzman family. They're really well known in Colorado and actually they'll pro they might be here for the MAPS conference this weekend. They were here um, two years ago for it. So um, in, in the 80s 
it was a really interesting thing. The festival took on names, weird names, like Mush Fest and <laughs> the Wild Mushrooms Telluride. And mm -hmm. Shroom Fest is a name that's kind of bouncing around right now and the Telluride Mushroom Festival. And, um, and it's now been taken on by an organization called the Telluride Institute, who's been around for 26 years, I believe. So the festival started 32 years ago in Telluride and has continued a tradition of trying to bring out not just the science behind mushrooms, where it started out with the Beth um, Israel Hospital and the Salzmans, but now into kind of a shift into edible mushrooms. Instead of just poisonous mushrooms, we started talking about edible mushrooms. And instead of talking about the different fear-based things and the different risks and losses that we have from mushrooms, we started talking about other uses, like medicinal uses. And that started to evolve. And we finally came up with three areas that we think encompass the fungal kingdom and how we can approach it. And those three areas start out with cultivation and remediation, entheogens and medicinal, and then culinary, cultural, and identification in kind of a lump category. And that can really go many different so that first picture you saw there, if I can get that onto that, there we go. This is my ciliated uh, wood dowel. I can use this to get in there. See if I can get it to stop before it goes on the lamp. And uh, I promised Kurt that I would show some videos, so we'll show that at the end. Uh, no, we're okay. I, I think that this really is um, something that rep really represents something to me. Um, the, the world of fungi is something that we know very little about, or if you might be a classical mycologist, then you might think that we do know quite a bit about it. But Jerry Linkoff, um, our festival keynote this year, um, he's been a keynote several times, he's still involved with the festival, has <coughs> kind of brought it to a point saying that, you know, the mycological world was like an office or a little cubby hole in the backside of an office in the backside of the biology department, which was also associated with the zoology department. And so he was like, now there's actually an office, a real office for the mycologists. So um, I, I dug this up. I thought this was kind of an interesting thing to think about. Um, it was put really, really well. So I want to read this to you. The, the participants of our festival, once it came to Telluride, no longer came from a small minority of medicinal or medical professionals, but now included amateur mushroom hunters, co commercial cultivators, cooks and chefs, psychedelic artists, professional psychiatrists, computer programmers, new age seekers of alternative elixirs, real estate investors, rug merchants, <laughs> unreconstructed 60s hippies, <laughs> people from the Green Berets as well as Greenpeace, and all their various children and allies. And I think that really describes um, the festival well. Anybody who's been there has seen so many different people. and. Um, the people that have attended have really had an opportunity to, to understand the relationships that evolved. And I would say that from just watching you guys all come together here, that it really feels like the same family when you come into the mycological community. <clears throat> all right. Let's hope that we can make this work. I'm working with some compatibility issues. My computer was too new for this system, I think. Um, it, it got upgraded and updated, so it's kind of like the list of morale. <laughs> so, um, whoa, that's too big for the page. All right, so the Telluride Mushroom Festival. We're in the 32nd year. The focus this year is fungi as medicine, and the list of headliners is a group of people that might actually be pretty familiar to you all. Um, Gary Linkoff is going to be our keynote speaker today. Robert Rogers just produced a book called um, The Fungal Pharmacy. It's a really radical book. It's got a lot of um, research. This guy was here for SOMA, I believe. 
um, and had been traveling the West Coast a little bit. I believe he's um, from up there in that little Canadian place, just north of Seattle. Um, Larry Melman's going to be here. Uh, Christopher Hobbs, he's from Santa Cruz, I believe, or something. Yeah. Pretty close to here. Um, Crystal Cole, I don't know, has anybody heard of Crystal Cole in here? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> she is going to be helping uh, Gary Linkoff kick off the psychedelic component of the festival. <laughs> and um, she's pretty she's overqualified for that. Overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> the opportunity to live in a missile silo uh, in the middle of Kansas or something, and she was uh, the test subject for a chemist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who knew intimately how the mind interacts with um, different types of rings and things and chemical conditions. So uh, Trad Collier is going to come out. He's becoming faculty of the Telluride Mushroom Festival. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you have heard of him, but you've got to watch this guy. His, um, he's doing some amazing research on remediation. He's going to head up our micro-remediation course that we're going to teach during the festival this year. And he's got programs um, working with different, um, different companies in the petrochemical industry. He's got some projects down in Haiti. He's got um, different partnerships with colleges and things. And when he came out last year, he helped us uh, create a special brew um, with the local brewery, and it was pretty successful. We sold through <laughs> all the beer before the festival was over. So, I forgot, what was the name of that beer? The festival is going to be on the 15th through the 18th of August Colorado. in Telluride, Colorado. Telluride, Colorado. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. It's in that, you know, I was fortunate enough to live in, um, in Michigan where we just pointed at a place on our hand, but <laughs> Colorado is square and it's in the southwest corner of the state where we have the festival. It's in the San Juan Mountains, which are unique, um, in a unique climate down there because they're right on the edge of the, uh, of the desert. So the all the storms that come there slam into it and bring desert, um, all the monsoon rains, mm -hmm. and it just creates a really quick flash of mushrooms and really abundant for about two months, and then it kind of settles right down. Then we're then we're into the cold weather mushrooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> Eugenie <coughs> Bone, have you guys? She was yeah. here for Soma. She spoke yeah. and. Um, yeah. Yeah, she's amazing, she and she so has mycophilia. Yeah, and she'll be there. So it's it's interesting when you go to like a big like concert or something like that, and they've got these headliners, this <laughs> list of people. You know, you're like, oh man, I can't wait to meet George <laughs> Clooney, right? Yeah. It's not like that. You you will never meet these people. <laughs> they're, they're right there with you in the audience sitting next to you and so it's a really intimate experience and you're with the professionals you're with people who founded the festival you're with people that are influential in the mycological community and they're it's just like being here being around these kind of guys like you except there's no parade here <laughs> we haven't even got to that yet <laughs> alright so this is my friend Taya oh my God. <clears throat> you're going to love Colorado um, this year we have quite a lineup of things going on. Um, I, it's been really a long time since there's been any change in the organization and it's really hard for a person like me to come in because I look like I'm young, and I am, but <laughs> I, and I don't know everything and so it's a big, huge learning curve and so coming into this festival, you know, I had to rely on people like Taya who's a farmer out there. She's moved up to Minnesota now and she's doing a lot of work. And there's a huge community of people trying to support this festival in our community. And we had a huge challenge this year when we had another festival, a massive festival that wanted to plop right down on our dates. And it was the mycological community that came out in full force and delivered 200 letters straight to the mayor of our town and 200 signatures on a on a petition 
in four days' time to save our festival from just being destroyed. And the mayor scolded me for having people write letters in a public comment period. And I told him it was their right to comment during the public comment period. <laughs> um, with all due respect. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting situation. And he told me to s have them stop. So I tried to stop this freight train. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, uh, the town council said this is the most letters they've received in their, their entire history. <laughs> I was like, yeah. People started calling me saying, I, who do you work for? Okay. That's Manny Salzman. He's one of the founders of the festival. Um, he and Andrew Weil and um, David Aurora and the Shulkins and I mean, so many people participated. I got a list of people. Uh, uh, Dr. Sasha Shulgin, Dr. Ralph Abraham, Laura Huxley, Terrence McKenna, Joan Halifax, Dr. Ralph Singer, Dr. Wade Davis, Dr. Lynn Margulis, Dolores LaChapelle, Dr. Carrie Mullis, Dr. Manuel Torres, Kat Harrison, who's in town this week, by the way, Dr. Ralph Metzner, and even our own David Aurora have um, presented or been part of the history of making this festival. So um, it's, it's really been a success in many ways. Oh, and this guy right here. Have you guys met Daniel Winkler? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're going yeah. All right, he is charming. <laughs> He's pointing out uh, cordyceps here um, at one of our presentations. Christopher Hobbs. Our Good Times. Have, how many of you guys have heard of Our Good Times? How many of you went to his poetry this week? No. He was here and did some, uh, some of his poetry here. Um, he's been out in the Bay Area for the last week or so. And so he's somebody who's very intimately um, involved with the festival. He is the person who handed the festival off to me, even though I said I wouldn't do it. And he was very convincing. He's also the uh, Green Party County Commissioner for um, San Miguel County, which is where Telluride is. He got reelected here? He did get reelected, and uh, it's been it's been a tough time. Um, his his partner passed away this year, and um, of breast cancer, Mary Ferry, wonderful woman, and now he's you know he's got to take care of his kids, and he's got to take care of a lot of things. So um, it's it was perfect timing for me to kind of step in and take it off his hands. But uh, he said he would only let me take it off his hands if he could still be the parade uh, leader and the MC in the big event. <laughs> Watch out for this guy, but you probably want to meet him. <laughs> so there's a few photos of parades and things. Um, all kinds of people show up to this. <laughs> that guy looks kind of familiar. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, actually Greg Sanchez. Um, he was the former uh, president of the Colorado Mycological Society. And uh, he was getting a few pointers from Kurt there. <laughs> so um, we have a vendor world. We have all kinds of things going on during the festival. Um, right at the main festival event headquarters, there's like this indoor vendor world. And we have like infiltrated the town. I'm trying to get it into the biggest part of the town as possible. And this year, um, one of our main events, which has grown massively, is the culinary event um, called the Chef's Cook-Off. And the Chef's Cook-Off originally started as this small little event. It was professional chefs doing these little cook-off events. Telluride draws in some of the best chefs in the world um, due to the people <laughs> who have the $15 million homes there. So, <laughs> um, because of that, we have a chef's cook-off that took off, and now, um, last year, we had 400 people attend this event, um, which was up by about 100 people from the year before, and it had doubled the year before that. So, this year, what we decide we're going to do is we're going to close down a street and tell your ride, and we're going to have a big chef's cook-off with a professional panel of judges. Um, the person who wins gets to walk with art down the parade route um, and 
and say that they love mushrooms. <laughs> and uh, in addition, we're going to have a brew fest on the other half of the block. So we're going to have this big street party with music and all kinds of stuff. It's going to be it's, it's going to be mainly festival that day. Um, the festival has more than is is more than a festival. It's more like a conference and a festival. Um, I'm trying to increase the festivities, but I'm also trying to bring up the academic and scholarly approach to the festival as well because it, a lot of people in pop culture really like to eat those little blue standing mushrooms and stuff um, and none of them grow in Colorado as far as we know uh, naturally <laughs> so um, I've tried to bring in a higher intellect into the and try to bring a lot of the different concepts that um, that scientists have into the public realm because I think people are separated from it. And I think it's really important that we bridge this gap that mushrooms are not hard to grow and mycelium is not hard to grow. And you don't need a sterile environment to do it, although Graham Steinbeck here is using a uh, portable flow hood from his, um, that he's kind of fabricated and put into use and they have this traveling thing they do with, uh, with, with growing mushrooms. And they offer at the festival after our forays um, the opportunity for you to clone your mushrooms uh, on petri dishes or start another strain. There's a lot of people that I'm trying to get involved to make that happen. So the psychedelic movement of mushrooms probably couldn't have really accelerated without um, our Gordon Lawson's trip down to Mexico and meeting Maria Sabina. So um, with this is kind of a founding piece for the psychedelic end of things, but it also to me represents a lot more. It kind of shows that um, there's a lot more to mushrooms than just what happens in the United States and that there's other cultures that are represented try to bring that out in the festival during the time we're, we're there. That's Charis. He won the best costume. We got four kids on the bike. <laughs> the parade uh, also has a great opportunity for people to um, compete in costumes. And numerous people come out there for just to wear their crazy costumes. I'm a little underdressed here. Here's our chef's cook-off. It's sponsored by the library and one of the um, marijuana dispensaries in town. Um, now that medical marijuana is legal recreationally. It's yeah. legal yeah. now. Everything's legal now, right? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I know, they're talking about marijuana tourism now. Well, that'll certainly benefit the uh, cook-off, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> that it's sponsored by yeah. marijuana these guys won that year, they made a candy cap ice cream. Yeah. And it took it took first place easily. <laughs> I made some uh, mushroom sliders. So Boletus edgeless, it's um, one of the main species people are going for when they're out there. I know Kurt's talked about trying to load up his van when he's out there. D did you came out with David? Oh, David loaded up and left. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Kurt. I told you where they used to be. Then he I got his car it. stolen. Emmy <laughs> <laughs> Muscaria. take some uh, mycelium home with them. Um, I'm trying to open it up so that there's a lot more workshops this year. I got some partnerships with the town of Telluride. This is the first time they've ever tried to implement um, any of their remediation projects <coughs> in the valley. It, the history of the town is based on mining. And there's heavy metals, severe soil disturbance, heavy runoff, um, 
just so many toxic environments and I finally broke through. I've been there for years working on these guys. Mainly in a Bella Tipe, but I was told that because it has a root on it, it might be something. Feo Bolivia phallix or something like that. Or a phallic should have purple gills though, I think. Yeah, and it doesn't have purple gills. Yeah. It should be cream color. Cream color, white. No, it's not Feo Bolivia. It's like Colorado Bolivia. Yeah, it should have like rise in there somewhere. So that's actually a big basket, and that's probably about an eight or nine inch top on that, I believe. Oyster mushrooms, I think. What did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's Gary. He he does a lot. He gives. He's really good at giving a lot of historical information, and um, his talks are so funny. I hate to lead uh, lead into a talk for him because it's just like, why? There's a spelling yeah. error there. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Dr. Jonathan Barfield. He presented last year with Luna. They did a topic called Dharma Watch, and then he led a guided meditation afterwards. Um, he's going to do some presentations this year on the theogenic experience state specific research. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Joe Norris. Occasionally we get a nice beautiful rainbow uh, at the end of the valley. And this just happened right at the end of the parade uh, a couple years ago. So the parade's an interesting thing. Um, it seems like more people line up to watch the parade than people that actually participate in the parade. <laughs> and I'm hoping to change that sometime. <laughs> Fully load uh, Cuervo Cycle. Polyzellus Multiplex. Um, last year was a great year for these. We had like tons of clusters. They usually are about um, that big of a cluster. Hawks wings last year were huge. They get up to like dinner plate size. I think it was in Sarkodon and Picatus. A lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they're good to eat in Colorado. They don't taste very good here. Yeah, they're really incredible. I dry them and save them um, and just put them in the stews in the crock pot all winter long with my roadkill beer. Isn't in August? Yeah. Right in the middle of monsoon season. Reginosa, they grow, they're growing everywhere up there, about 9,000 feet that time of year. And they that's one of the ones that's supposed to be psychoactive. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it is. I, it may or may not be, but they, they've made that claim. Really? Yeah. Well, look at I, man, I'll take you guys on a walk. <laughs> <laughs> Do some state-specific research. <laughs> All right, so the other mushroom, this, do you guys know what this is? Chanterelles, Siberias, really common up there. Um, but our chanterelles, depending on the season, are about that big most of the time, right? Uh -huh. You just see this little really orange cap sticking out. And it, uh, not last year, but the year before. I took home 100 pounds one day. They were, like, in an area like this, they were just everywhere. And they were growing so fast and out of control that the caps were all probably about four inches across. And then your faithful oh, leader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready for the parade. <laughs> He's ready for something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the free party party, it looks like. <laughs> so um, before we get to the end here, I'm gonna, I just want to kind of give you a couple of festival highlights of what we're going to do this year. Um, there's going to be numerous workshops uh, that people can participate in, um, in micro-remediation projects, 
including like you making filters and things like that for the runoff so that we're at the top of the Colorado River watershed. So we want to provide the best water to you Californians. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, 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 and maybe eventually in Mexico if it gets that far. Um, but we're, we're definitely working on water quality issues. Um, the town, like I said, has been really open. Um, I'm still going through a lot of paperwork processes and whatever, but people are on board and you know they're really excited about the potential that this brings, um, that mushrooms actually attract people to towns. <laughs> they didn't realize that people travel to go mushroom hunting. And I was like, it's just like birding. And they're like, birding? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to abandon that and talk about soil amendments. And they're like, <laughs> 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 they're coming here for soil amendments? Um, <laughs> We have a beer release coming up this month. Uh, no, it's uh, for Memorial Day, so in, in one month. Um, we partnered up with the brewery and made a deal with those guys, and we are so lucky. A pro, uh, about, a, about 30 to 35% of each purchase of our, um, our beer that we produce, um, the first beer is gonna be a brown, like a walnut brown beer with reishi in it as the bitter. Um, a third of the portion of the purchase goes back to the Telluride Mushroom Festival. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we've had a relationship with a local um, business that can that kind of just is, is a symbiotic relationship <laughs> and uh, really kind of starts to highlight fermentation. The guy who owns the brewery didn't even know that yeast is fungi. <laughs> <laughs> I sat down with him at a meeting and had this discussion with him. I was like, let's start way at the beginning. <laughs> he didn't realize that there's a guy that made uh, a beer in Cal made a beer in California from a yeast that was discovered in amber from a bug in amber or something like that from millions of years ago. What does angiogenic mean? It means to bring out the God within or that it generates the God within, and that would be something that some people have experienced in uh, taking psychedelics. So that's one of our partnerships. We're gonna, we're gonna produce three batches, uh, full batches of beer. That's 215 gallons or something like that per batch. Um, and so we'll have beer on tap year round as opposed to just during the festival. That way we don't have a run on all our beer at once. Because <laughs> once you guys leave the festival, there's another festival the next weekend, <laughs> and they're asking for the beer too, because they've heard about it from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Chef's Cook-Off and the Brewfest are, are, um, are the new big expansion. We're closing off the road. We're gonna have tastings. Uh, talking about doing some wine tastings and cheese tastings with the molded cheeses, the blue cheeses and things like that. If you check out Blog Talk, uh, Blog Talk Radio, um, Graham Steinrock did an interview with me last year. He's going to do another one here in a week or so. Um, he and Jackie are going to be there to do some tastings and pairings. We have a new olive oil business in our town, and we're going to do some private tastings there. We have a bunch of private events. Our restaurants are all on board to have mushroom specials. We're gonna have special guest chefs and some of our um, presenters that'll be invited to be in one of those restaurants each night to kind of have a special um, event there. Our local uh, bakery that's in there, it's called Baked in Telluride. Uh, They've promised. <laughs> yeah, there's that. What is it? A double entendre. Um, they've actually come to us and said, "Hey, if your people bring clean mushrooms in and order a whole pizza, we'll put them on their pizza, and they can have their pizza like this." There's I, not too many places that do that, so I thought that was pretty cool. And he's like a staunch supporter of us. Um, this year we're adding a couple other things to the schedule. We're gonna have some morning events where people can come in and sit down at a coffee shop and sit down and have an intimate discussion with 
with authors, um, meeting <coughs> authors and talking to people who are doing different projects uh, <coughs> around the United States and around the world. Um, we're now going to add in to our programming um, a foray in Spanish this year, which is awesome because our town has like 20 to 25 percent Latino community, um, and I was I just bounced it off the people I hitchhiked with on my way here um, from my house, and they were like, "Oh, this is really important because we don't." We see mushrooms, we like mushrooms, we had mushrooms where we came from, but nobody can tell us anything about it here. So um, part of our program, we'll have children's programs this year. So it's kind of trying to keep the family alive and we have this new influx of people coming in, so it's kind of really important. Um, we're gonna have, we're trying to do this thing where we're trying to get the word out to people. So I'm, tra I'm traveling. I've traveled mainly on my own dollars to get here <coughs> this year and up and down the West Coast so that I could have this opportunity to share the festival with you. And we're going to have a booth at the MAPS conference. Uh, if you guys know who, what the MAPS conference is, the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies, um, every two years they have a conference right here in Oakland. Um, we're in San Francisco, sorry. <laughs> Other side of the way. Uh, yeah, in Oakland. And the, all the people who are doing psychedelic research from um, using marijuana for treatment of different illnesses, um, PTSD, um, terminal illness, uh, or late stages of you know cancer and things. We have to be out in 15 minutes. Gotcha. Um, so they're here, and I just, I'll put that out there. That's this weekend. Huh? That's this weekend. Starts on Friday. Mary, I hope that And this is what Kurt's been waiting for. Let me see if I can find it right here. Let's turn that guy off. So there's drummers playing in the background. They're just about ready to finish their song, and art is going to get people screaming. This guy just finally gave me his video. Um, he got on top of the buildings in town to do all this stuff earlier in the day and got out of control. Now I'm going to show you. I promised Kurt this. I, there's. Kurt walks through this picture. <laughs> yes, they're pushing the truck. <laughs> So you get awards for the types of costumes you have, the elaborateness of it. Um, kids get prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you back <laughs> Some of these people are really crazy. There's Daniel, right there in the middle. Oh, Daniel, with the hat on? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's Kurt right here. <laughs> Dressed up like Santa Claus <laughs> for some reason. There's some mycelium people there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Let's and then I'll show you the last. 
last one and we'll get out of here. Thanks for, uh, yeah, they're again pushing a vehicle because this is Art's old truck. Super old Toyota. Let me get this thing up here. All right. Does it have a lot of accommodations? Oh yeah. This tip. It is. It Main Street here is only like five or six feet or. It's five or six blocks long, and it's a, like three blocks up that way and three blocks out that way. You can camp right at the end of the street there, at the end of town. At your reserve uh, early. Our venues are in town and at the other end of town as well. Um, more than just this, there's Telluride, and then there's Mount, the town of Mount Village. Big uh, Horn. So there's numerous places. There's thousands of rooms. So we have room to expand. That was not Ken. Like I said, there's another one of those Santa Claus guys. And I'm going to stop it right there because uh, it's kind of funny that the guy who's taking videos starts talking about taking mushrooms. <laughs> like, hey, you guys taking mushrooms right now? That's our festival, and it's a good time. If you, uh, if you guys... Uh, are interested, uh, my, you can always contact me at scott at shroomfest.com um, if you have any questions or suggestions of people to bring into the mushroom community or present or anything like that, or you just want to talk. If you just go on the internet, put in shroomfest and their website pops up. Yep. And if anybody wants any information on what to do, where to stay, just email president at mssf.org. You can camp free in the forest. It's <laughs> August. It's not cold, it's not hot, you're at 10,000 feet. It's beautiful, I mean, it's, you're in a beautiful spot in the world. It is just a beautiful place to be for a week. I mean, I go there for about 10 days. I, the festival's four days, but you can do a lot of other stuff. You can go out and mushroom in every day, and you don't have to go far. And, uh, or you can stay in town camp. If you're gonna stay in the town campground, you gotta get there by Monday that week, because it fills up by Tuesday. And it's uh, $10 a day if you're over 59, $20 a day if you're under 59. And uh, then there's high-end places you can stay. I mean, there's tons of places to stay there depending on how much money you want to spend. And we can get you, if you want to stay in town, we can get you a deal on that. There's like, you know, the lodging people give us like, you know, special deals for, for our festival being in town. And yeah, and the restaurants guys. are there from up here to down here. I mean, you can, you know, there's you can spend $100 a plate, or you, or can, you can spend, spend $10. <laughs> <laughs> got, got to the at the Marriott Hotel Thursday, setting up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and 